Joining me to discuss the current economic situation is the CLSA strategist, Russell Napier. Hi, Russell. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you. Russell, a wise move by China to allow its currency to strengthen as U.S. politicians debate what's happening with regard to trade with the, in between the two countries? Yeah, we have to remember that the decisions taken by politicians, not by central bankers, not by Ministry of Finance people. So it is inherently and always will be a political decision. So this is politics. It's a wise political move. They probably should have moved before. Yeah, I mean, do you see a trade war in the offing? I mean, was the move enough or will retaliatory measures be instigated by the U.S. in time? Well, I think as someone who's covered Asia for, for 20 years, we've been here many, many times before, and you probably remember before the most favoured nation status arguments, and we always came to the wire. We came very close. We had presidents who, who ran for office uh, uh, on a manifesto of doing something, and they never did. So perhaps we're being lulled into a false sense of security. But this brinkmanship is not new. It's very old, and so far neither party has been prepared to go for the wire. I don't think this is the time when that's going to happen. So I think it's politics is, is largely noise. It has been in the past. It probably is, and there's a very low chance that we go beyond that. Currencies, Russell, obviously, where it's all happening in Asia right now, specifically in regards to Japan intervening yesterday. Uh, I mean, just in a simple question, does it and will it work? OK, well, one thing it will work is it will work and that the yen will not go below the Ministry of Japan's target level as long as they're prepared to live with the domestic liquidity implications. They can create an infinite amount of yen if they want to. So to that regard, it works. The more important question is, will it work to reflate Japan if you print a lot of money? And I think many people have question marks on that. But what it really should work to do is this. All around the world, people are making the big inflation or deflation call and financial markets are, are riven by this debate. The activities of the Bank of Japan yesterday should make it clear to all across the planet that our future is inflation and not deflation, because the last holdout for deflation, which was Japan, has, has given up. And the Swiss National Bank is intervening in the foreign exchange market. And there's a very simple question all investors have to ask themselves. If no central banker in the world will let their currency go up, surely we have to devalue against something and therefore we have to devalue against goods and services uh, and that's inflation so the the, the important lesson uh, for the next five six seven maybe ten years from what the bank of japan did is prepare for inflation don't prepare for deflation and that means get out of bonds and go into equities yes absolutely and particularly in america where we see an incredible relationship between bonds and equities if we look at the relationship between the dividend yield and, and equities or the the earnings yield which is the inverse of the pe and, uh, and and bond yields we're looking at levels of valuation we haven't seen since the 1950s so there is a, a once in a generation opportunity definitely to get out of bonds and uh, for the next couple of years at least, we should see pretty good returns from, from equities. Longer term, there's even issues with equities because the scale of the bond bear market for the United States could really be one that drags on for decades and not years. And eventually, higher yields on bonds impact equities. Uh, but when we're, when we're starting at such low levels on bond yields, it could take a few years before there are any negative implications for equities. Russell, wish we had more time, but thanks for joining us today. Russell Napier there, a consultant global strategist at CLSA.